Okay, so this is the Radio Shack 4x4 off-roader, which was a toy that you could get at Radio Shack in the 80s, I think into the early 90s. And I had one when I was a kid. And uh, I don't know what happened to the thing eventually, I think. It, it got, I remember it got broken under here and I tried everything imaginable to try and glue that thing and save it when I was a kid, but uh, never actually got it to have any solid repair so I think it met its demise I'm not sure where where it got lost but it hit the trash somewhere along the way I'm sure um, anyways I've acquired another one this one runs um, electronics work chrome's a bit rough all of it but uh, and the tires aren't round it's been sitting in, in somewhere flat spotted a little bit but um, it's in the kind of shape where I'm gonna I'm gonna run it um, I think I'm going to ditch this roll bar. I got a 3D printed version of the 49 megahertz truck, which has a lot stronger roll bar. And I don't want these lights to break off because they're still intact. So my whole goal with this conversion is to keep the truck absolutely 100% untouched. So there'll be no cutting, no hacking. All the standoffs are going to stay in there. And nothing will be permanently changed so that I can put the old... Uh, radio equipment back in there and uh, put it back to original if I ever wanted to in the future. So a few things I want to accomplish with that is I want to be able to turn on and off the ESC. I want to be able to use, um, I want to be able to use, a, I got a Traxxas radio for it or a receiver and a Traxxas XL5 out of a TRX4. Um, they're actually quite easy to find because people take them out of the TRX4s and put in the hobby wings and what have you. So um, there's an abundance of them. They're easy to find on on uh, on marketplace and whatever for cheap. So I created some 3D parts, 3D printed printable parts that make this conversion really easy. And there's some other ones out there available too, but a lot of them just just rely on these two posts. And if you look at how um, how these things run with uh, with the steering actually there's a lot of torque and the servo will shift around a little bit so i built a different servo mount that kind of locks it in between everything in here and makes it rock solid so the servo that i'm using is just your run-of-the-mill traxxas 2075 this is just a cheap plastic gear servo that comes in like revos and slashes and all that stuff so i've changed them out of things and i've got a few lying around so this is the one that i end up using for the little servo horn these are the aftermarket ones that you get when you buy servos. This hole right here is actually, if you drill and tap that out to an M3, that's all I've done here on this servo. And then I've just printed a little, a little uh, 5.8 millimeter um, cylinder, a little bushing, and then bolted it on with a three millimeter. So that, that takes care of the servo situation. And these are cut off. They actually were broken off of my Revo. So I just turned them off the rest of the way and then they don't get in the way of the situation. So I'm gonna start by taking all the uh, original electronics out and cutting the wires. I've already got a map of where the wires went originally so I can put it back easy enough. So I'm just gonna rip this stuff out. Keep the screws because it uses all the original screws as well. You don't have to change any of them. You have to actually undo this uh, motor cover because we're going to change the wires on the motor anyways. Let's do one more there. Like so. Lift this off, then your charge plug will come out. That's what actually holds the charge plug in when you get your transmission in your hand. Put that back in for now. I'm going to cut these wires. I'm just going to leave a little bit of a nub on the motor here so I can test for polarity. Okay. Oh, I'm going to keep everything with it. Just trim the wires off that need to be trimmed off. I'm going to leave all the wires that can stay, that won't affect anything. All the servo wires stay intact. The antenna is going to go. We're just going to take that right off. They just get in the way and you end up bending them and they get mangled. So we'll just take the antenna right off and cut this wire. Okay. 
screw back in the hole. Okay, so it's basically electronics removed. That's pretty cool. So next, I'm going to I'm going to solder new bigger wires onto the transmission here. I just can't remember which one. So you can see that this is probably the most underbuilt part of the truck. And I think the other blue one that I've got, it's actually flimsier. This one seems sturdier. And there's some other little differences too, like the servo, um, the little dowel that goes on there. The other the other truck is four millimeter. This one's a six millimeter. So they did have little changes. The self-tapping screws are a little different in this one too. But uh, yeah, a little tiny motor. What is it here? It's a uh, Mabuchi. So what I've done here is I'll just take the top transmission cover off and uh, solder a little bit better wires onto this thing because the wires that are coming on are, are like micro. So uh, in this one, the red one was the positive. So that means this is positive and this is hooked to negative or zero volts. It's going to go forward. And then when they switch it, it's going to go reverse. So it's nice to have the colors uh, matching when they go into your ESC. So next step will be to put that cover back on and uh, get ready to mount up all the parts here. So here is everything you need to do this conversion without cutting or drilling or doing anything to the truck. So this is a ESC mount, which mounts in the same place that the original circuit board mounts. The XL5 actually mounts in this upside down so that the easy set button, which is also your, your on off button and it allows you to switch between the different driving modes and stuff, which is kind of nice to maintain, um, will be accessible from the bottom. And in these trucks, they actually cut a hole in the battery door for this ribbon. So that hole's already there from the factory. So when that ESC is in there, this plunger fits in here and there's a, you put a screw in here to retain it. And then it gives you a button inside the battery door to set the different modes, turn it on and off, whatever. And then of course you can't see the LED when you do that. So there's another little hole here. And that's where we run a little optical fiber uh, for um, or fiber optic cable for like industrial sensors. And this is a fake switch and it's got a little hole for that fiber optic cable to come in. So from the bed of the truck, we can see if the ESC is dropped into low voltage mode or if there's a, if it's powered on or what battery mode it's in or be able to set the driving modes, all that stuff. So important to be able to see that light. So I, I wanted to uh, run that out. So that's the mount for the ESC. This is the servo mount, which will trap that Traxxas servo in there really nicely and kind of wedge it between the inner fenders so it can't move around at all. It's very tight in there. And the screws kind of just hold it down. Then the screws aren't actually holding the servo. They're just holding that, that bracket down. And I do have a TRX-4M, and this is the batteries they use on, on those little trucks. And they have the proprietary connector, which most people hate. It's not really a big deal. Um, and it makes it quite easy to make a little hard adapter for it. So you just use a 100 thou pin header, pull the middle ones out, and print this little block, and put the uh, pin header in there, and then you can run your wires out here, and you got a nice little plug that you can plug that, uh, that battery into. And I'm gonna put all of these prints, including the, this is a 3D printed replica of the blue off-roader so that I can roll it and beat it up. And cause they break, they tear the lights off pretty easy. So this, you can just print another one, break it, print another one, break it, print another one, doesn't matter. So I wanted to model that right away so I could just, and I actually kind of like the look of this roll bar better anyway. So I'm gonna put that one on the yellow one as well for when I'm driving it. So I got butt connect or bullet connectors here. These are gonna go on the motor wires. So they plug into ESC nice. Got a little bit of shrink tube for the power wire terminations. And I'll just solder those. I'm not gonna put any type of connector. Screws to hold the ESC down. Your servo with the, uh, with the little horn mod here, which I kind of already showed earlier. And then a radio receiver, which I 
my friend was kind enough to donate this one to the cause. So I got the ESC off Marketplace because there's lots of them out there. People are get, taking them out of trucks. So for this type of project, it's perfect. I mean, I could do a cheap little Amazon one, but this one's kind of cool. It's got driving modes and it's not working at all. There's no heat to speak of. So when this thing's upside down, it don't matter. The electrons won't fall out. So uh, we'll move back over to the truck and start bolting parts in. I'm going to drop the steering servo in, which I've already centered the servo so I know that it's in the middle of its, uh, its travel. So it'll just fall right down in there nice. And you can see that uh, it fits in there very nicely. And once we get the radio hooked up and everything with this truck in particular, it's very important to set your servo endpoints because the throw on the steering is very short and uh, if you don't set that, it's going to tear up that servo in no time, if not, and it, or break the, the little horn down there that this thing engages into. So definitely want to set your servo endpoints. So this just drops down in here, nice and tight. And you can see that that fits very snugly. So that is holding that thing can't move. Even without the screws, it can't move. So we drop the screws in. And obviously back thread always with these little models. You don't want to be cutting new threads. You just split those towers. The plastic actually seems pretty good on these models, but uh, you just don't want to do it. It's just asking for problems. And just snug it down. So now that thing's rock solid in there. So like I said, I'm going to put all these models or these prints on Thingiverse so you can just print them out yourself or have somebody you know print them out for you. Okay, so here's the ESC mount. You just take a three millimeter screw. It goes into this hole here. And then what we do is we slide this plunger. Goes in like this, and there's a little chamfered corner there. You can see it. That's just to clear the, the emboss on the, the ESC. So this screw just goes in and it retains that plunger. It's just gonna sit in there. So the plunger can't fall out into the battery area. So that's all that does. And that's just pushing on the button on the ESC. So now this gets mounted this way. And these existing standoffs engage into these holes. And then your original PCB screw goes right here. And that will hold it down. Really those standoffs are doing most of the work though. This thing's just really just kind of, kind of just holding it down. Snug it up. Now you got a nice place to mount all your stuff. So now the ESC goes in this way. And we fire the screws in. And again, these, these XL5s are really easy to find. And there's an older version too. I don't know if the older version has the driving modes or not, but uh, it doesn't have heat sink on it either. There we go. And depending on how your 3D printer is set up, you may have to drill these holes out. You may be able to thread right in. It all depends on what finished size you're left with. Usually with the PLA, you can just thread it right in most of the time. So now with this print for the Traxxas battery, and people who aren't going to use this battery won't care at all about this part, but it's just a 100 thou header pin. You pull one of the pins out, and they just go right in here. And well, once you once you get it in there, I'm going to fiddle with it a little bit here, but once you get it in, you basically have the Traxxas plug, and then you can just bend these bend these over a little bit, solder wires on, and then fill this with hot glue and cut it flush and you got a nice little plug that the size of this wedges into the battery compartment where the C cells normally were. So you can just put it in there and it'll stay all on its own. Maybe a little bit of two-sided tape on the back and then you got a nice plug to plug that nice small battery in. And that little battery actually runs this model for probably 45 minutes easy. It's like, it's tons of power. Uh, batteries are ridiculous. When I was a kid, I used to stand in front of the battery charger for like ever, wondering if it was enough. Should I pull the batteries off? Is it time? I need to run this car. And then every time you'd put them in and the thing would be dead. And dead. Felt like four seconds, but probably got eight minutes out of it, maybe on a good day.
So anyways, the new batteries are awesome and they make these things way funner to run. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that glue to dry on the power plug, I'm just gonna put these bullet connectors on the motor. thing I am going to add a, an LED indicator in the original spot so uh, I'm going to put it in with the battery feed so when I solder the main battery leads or I could put it on a plug that comes off of here and maybe I'll do that on this one I'll just add that after and I'll plug it into there um, that way it reminds me that a battery's in there so if I shut it off I'll see that light and I'll be then I'll remember to pull the battery out because if I tie that light into you know the uh, receiver bus or anything like that it's going to turn off when I turn off the ESC and then I might forget a battery in there and I don't want to do that so I'm going to tie it into the battery. Only downside to that is if I do leave a battery in there and I you know actually walk away it's probably going to kill the thing right to zero and then the battery will be wrecked but hopefully I don't forget. Okay, so here is the little homemade Traxxas battery plug. Just fill it up with hot glue in the back, stick her in the battery tray. So that's going to go right in here. You'll see our new little button down in the bottom. You can just see it there. So that will push on the ESC to turn it on and off. see it just pushing up in there so so that original hole has now got the button to turn on the ESC and it has the wiring for the battery going through it so we haven't cut anything yet when we're not gonna we're not cutting a single thing on this truck to do this conversion so and then my little Traxxas battery plugs in right there So I'm going to solder these connections. I'll do that off camera because it's just boring. Okay, so I've got it to the point. Motor's plugged in. Routing the wires up through here, up to this side, plugged into the motor. Got the battery wires coming up through that original strap hole and terminated into there. And I've actually buried a little 1.5K resistor in here. And I am coming off straight off the battery leads because I want to leave this uh, accessory plug there in case I want to put lights in the roll bar or whatever. I have two different versions of the roll bar print. One of the versions has a place to hide wires in the backstay. And also um, the lights are hollow and they've got little lenses that you can print out of like clear PETG or something and put LEDs in there if you wanted to. They're all going to be on Thingiverse. Okay, so the LED is wired in there, you can see. I will zip tie everything down at the very end there and get it all looking nice. But now, okay, we're gonna... so now I'm going to stick down the receiver, which I just put it kind of right in this area here somewhere. And it's nice because you can see the receiver light through the sunroof of the truck, which is kind of cool. So then I got this little hole right here, which is for the aerial to go down. And then we bring it out over here. And I got another little hole here, which is for winding this cable up nice and kind of tying it right here. Okay, so I've finished wrestling with this thing. I'm just gonna zip tie it down flat like that. so it's not flapping in the breeze. Not crazy tight, just something to hold it in place. Okay. Okay, so I got a little four millimeter piece of air tubing here just to help protect the antenna and I bent it because this comes 
pretty close to the roof of the truck. So just bend it back just a little bit like that. You tell the antenna is pretty delicate, so just something to kind of protect it. So now it just the roof will come right to probably right about here. It's very, very close. Okay. Next, I'll fire the servo uh, plug-in, which goes into channel one. Depending on what radios you use, I mean, you might even just use the, uh, you might even just use the 3D models as a template for the for the truck itself, and just because you're using a different ESC or a different uh, different receiver or whatever. But I just this is just the stuff that I had lying around, so it's what I ended up using. Those holes are there just to, for the express reason to hold the hold the servo wires in. Now those are tied up. Same thing over here. Get another set. Now those are tied up. How decent? Can probably pull that one over a little bit, but hanging around there. Nothing's flapping in the breeze, so that's good. I'll put one more on this bundle right here. This is the original ribbon. I'm not taking it out because if I ever put the truck back, then that's going to be reinstated as the 9-volt evacuation device. I'm just going to throw in. I don't even know. I'll put one more on here. Why not? Just around these ones. The rest are fine, I think. Okay, so... You can't have too much stuff in this area because the box fits very closely. Same with these, like I think it pretty much sits on this ledge right here, right in here, so. This will probably be okay. That one zip tie might be a little bit in the way. Okay. Also, can't have anything hanging off the back of here because the back window is right here and the front window is right here. It's very, very close. So everything fits pretty tightly in here. So with a little ribbon, I'll just tuck off to the side. That's staying in there. So now, that's it. This thing is converted to modern electronics. And we haven't drilled a single hole. We haven't butchered it. Could easily put it back, you know, in a, you know, a couple minutes of soldering and whatever. Oh, there's one thing I forgot, and that's the fiber optic chunk, which means I'm going to have to unbolt that and take it back off again, but we'll, uh, I'll do that off camera. Okay, so the fake switch, it's just a 3D model printed out of this, the original switch. It's got a hole in it, but of course with 3D printers, you never know exactly what size you're going to get, so it's going to just be opened up a little bit with something like this. And the nice thing about doing it this way rather than drilling is it'll squeeze back down on this a little bit. I'm just going to fire that back up and see now that that fiber optic cable is right in there. You can see the light going through it right now. So that'll be my ESC indicator in the bed of the truck. You'll be able to still see it. So this now gets screwed in right here. Kind of a nice way of hiding it. We still haven't drilled a hole on anything, right? So then this comes down here and then goes up into the ESC mount plate. I'll just cut that off. Should be using a razor blade for that. So I'm going to cut this optical fiber. It's good to do it with a razor blade and get a nice clean cut on the end. It works better. It'll still work, but it works better even that. And this this stuff can be bought from DigiKey. Anybody, there's lots of little fiber optic experiment kits and stuff. That's what I got it from. screw doesn't have much for threads left and then they're very gentle so the screws are different in this truck than the other one which is odd too 
I'm not sure what's up with that. So the fiber optic cable just slides up into there. It's in the hole beside the, uh, it's in this hole right here, right here. Slid in there from the bottom and that way it picks up the light on the ESC. I didn't want to put it underneath those wires, but well, it is okay where it is. So now you can see that little fiber optic cable is going up into there. It's going to grab the ESC's light from right there. It would have been a lot easier if I uh, remembered to put that in before I had put everything together. But you know, that's how it goes. Okay, so there's the roll bar fitted. So now I got the TQI radio, which goes with the Traxxas Link. This is a, actually kind of a, a little bit older, simpler. Well, actually, I don't think it's that old. I think it's just the, the bare bones Traxxas Link receiver, which is perfect. It works great. Um, I'm going to plug in the battery. We should have an LED in the box. So a little Traxxas battery plugs right in. Should plug right in. You can just actually I'm not gonna close the box up yet because I gotta turn the ESC on, but I gotta turn it on while I'm pushing this because I want to uh, bind the receiver. Okay, so now I'm gonna bind the TQI, so hold the set down button down while turning it on. It'll flash red. And then hold down the link button and push the new ESC power button in the bottom. And that's it. We got a green light on the receiver. That means we got we have steering. And we should have forward motion okay so now i have to set the steering limits battery will just sit right in here close up the door that's it we now have modernized electronics so and this thing's got crawl mode and all the other modes and if you look on the switch there's our esc light so we can set all of our modes we can tell it well i mean you can usually tell if it's kicked into low power mode but whatever tracks this tqi system you just hold menu down push it one more time so you're getting two green blinks push set once and then set again it'll take you into the steering area push menu again and it'll bring you into the steering sub trim and then the next one will bring you into set steering limits so now we just turn to the right as far as we want it to go Oh, we have to reverse the servo travel too. So the first thing we got to do is make it turn the right way. So that's uh, one blink. We push it and it'll switch the servo direction. So now it's going the right way. Two blinks. One, two, and we'll set the servo sub trim. So I'm going to center the multifunction knob and then push set. And now we're on sub trim, so I'll kind of center it with that as best as I can. That's good enough for now. Set that. And then we'll go three red blinks will be the endpoints. So now I push that, push that, turn to the right as far as it'll go before things start deflecting and being not happy, right about there. Push that, turn it to the left. About there, that's it. So now that's it. That's as far as it'll travel. Nothing gets into a bind and everything's happy. Hold menu down and get back out into your normal area. Now we have fully functional proportional steering on a retro Radio Shack truck. These trucks are awesome. Like they did such a good job on these things back in the days. No wonder they sold them for like 10 years. So now I'll take it out in the backyard and we'll take her for a rip. Try and get these tires to round out a little bit. 
Uh, yeah, so I will put a link in the description for the Thingiverse page that has all the parts. I'm just going to put all the parts in one. And then I also have these thumb controls for the TQI in there as well. And uh, they're going to be my first Thingiverse uh, posts. So hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, go and get one of these off-roaders and bring it back to life.